Hello students and friends. In this video, we are going to see a short demo on the semi-quantitative phase analysis from the X-ray diffraction data using a software called GSAS2, right? So, semi-quantitative phase analysis means uh, up to the unit cell uh, determination, okay? Starting from the phase identification and then unit cell parameters and uh, your space group determination and then your uh, you know uh, HKL indexing all those things right so up to this we will be calling that as a semi quantitative phase analysis right so I already told you we are going to use the software called GSAS2 right so whenever you are opening this particular GSAS2 software uh, it will show you three windows one is main window another one is plot window another one is bash window right so here the bash window we, are, we will not be using it for any purpose only for some information purpose alone we will be using right so here this is the complete GUI window and here it, here it is going to be used to see or visualize or uh, uh, do something with the plots right x-ray diffraction plots right so first to do first to do the semi quantitative phase analysis we have to import the powder diffraction data right so for that you have to go to import and powder data right so if you know the file format you can select any of the file format and then you can select the data otherwise if you don't know anything about the file format you just simply press guess format from file right now it will be asking you for the uh, uh, asking you to browse the file right so here i have uh, saved the data here in the xrd data sorry 2021 XRD data. Maybe I'll select a file called 10.ra. Okay, I'm opening that file now. So now it will it will be asking you to confirm whether the file is correct or not. Okay, so you just press yes. Now it will be asking you for the uh, instrumental uh, instrument parameter file, right? So here in the same folder, the XRD data itself. I have that panalytical.prm file, so you just simply open, right? Okay. Otherwise, you can browse the location of the file from here, and you can open that. So I'm simply pressing open. Okay. Now the data is loaded for our analysis, right? Semi-quantitative phase analysis, right? So since it is a semi-quantitative phase analysis, uh, I don't need to use the data from uh, 10 degree to 140 degree of 2 theta, right? So I can limit the data to 80 degree or 90 degree itself, right? Which is required for semi-quantitative phase, uh, phase analysis, right? For that, you just simply go to limit and here you just start from uh, 10 degree to maybe 80 degree of 2 theta, right? Simply now the selector data is selected from this uh, dotted green line to dotted red line. Now you just uh, go to the background uh, tab. Now here you have to confirm that the uh, background function selected is chubby shape polynomial function, right? And maybe you just uh, set the number of coefficient to 10 or 8 like that, right? So later on you will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, changing, keep on changing the uh, number of coefficients so that the refine parameter, refine, uh, refinement parameter should be somewhat less, right? Below 10%, for example, RWP or RP, uh, that type of uh, refinement parameter should be less than uh, 10%, right? Should have the uh, value less than 10%. So now for the initial uh, stage, I am keeping that keeping the number of coefficient in it in eight. Okay, then you just go to instrument parameters. Here once again you have to uh, ensure that the source type is cop source type is copper K alpha radiation, right? With the wavelength of 1.54056 and 1.5444, right? That is K alpha one and K alpha two like that, right? And uh, here one more thing you, you have to ensure is the I2 to I1 intensity 1 to intensity 2 is 0.5 right so this intensity 1 to intensity 2 means there is the intensity difference in between the copper K alpha 1 line and copper K alpha 2 line okay so that should be always 0.5 right next you just go to sample parameters here you have to what is that ensure that the diffractometer type is not the Debesher Bragg Green Town, right? Which is a commercial one, right? So here for the semi-quantitative phase analysis, we are not going to refine any of these parameters, right? So these parameters we will be refining for 
uh, retail requirement itself, right? Now we don't need to bother about it. Next thing is we have to go to peak list, right? So here in the peak list, we don't have a, we don't have any peak list, right? We have to generate our own peak list from the plot date, uh, uh, plot window, right? So first you just zoom some of the uh, zoom some of the peaks in your uh, you know uh, plot window by selecting the uh, zoom zoom icon here, right? So here zoom icon is there. By selecting the zoom, you can select any data ranges, right? So maybe I have selected from maybe uh, 29 to 38 like that. Now I have three peaks here. Now deselect the zoom button. Now place your cursor at top of this uh, peak and simply click that, right? So once you click it, here you will be getting the peak parameter, right? This parameter is not an exact parameter, it is a coarse parameter, right? So we have to fine tune it by refining the peak position and intensity and all. Now I am going to select the next peak and the next peak, right? Like that, I am panning now and hovering over the data so that I can select all the peaks present in your data. Like this, you can move around the data to select all the data, all the peak data, okay? Now here I have four peaks. So here two peaks are there, right? Why I have not selected the second one means the second one is the K alpha two peaks, right? K alpha two peak that I have not selected, okay? Only we have to select the K alpha one line alone, right? So the, uh, the software itself uh, consider that the second peak is for K alpha two line based on the value what we have given in the uh, instrument parameters, right? K alpha 1, K alpha 2 intensity we have given, intensity ratio we have given and the wavelength value also we have given. Based on the data, it will consider that the second data is for K alpha 2, right? Next, and here a small intensity is there, you just see, here one intensity and here one intensity. So I have selected uh, all the peaks present in the data, so I am going to the home once again. So now you just see I have the peak list, right? So now I told you this peaks are this peak parameters are not the refined parameter, it is a coarse parameter. You have to refine it, right? For to refine that, you have to go to peak fitting. You will find peak fit, right? You just simply press peak fit and it will ask you to save the file, right? So 10 one like this i'm saving the file so now it is refined which one the intensity is refined don't worry you can do it for uh, you know two or three times you don't need to bother about it and next i'm going to uh, refine the peak position so to do that here uh, on top of that particular refine you just double click that and it will be asking you whether to vary all or vary none you just uh, select vary all so you will be having the peak, I mean tick mark over all the, you know, uh, peak positions, right? Now once again you can do the peak fit. Next is your sigma values. Now it is 23%, R, WP value is 23%. Now gamma value I am going to refine. Now you just see 6.27 percentage, okay? In this pop-up you can see that RWP 6.27 percentage, right? So maybe here in the bash window you can have that particular, uh, you know, uh, uh, that refined parameter. Reduced size square is 3.67 and RWP is 6.27 percentage, right? So here in the bash window you can see that particular information. 6.27. So I already told you RWP should be below 10 percentage, right? Now you just see here it is 6.27 percentage so that our fitting of all the peak is very good, okay? Now we can move to the next step. So here in the next step we are having index peak list, right? So we have to index the peak list means, indexing the peak list means we have to assign the HKL values for the uh, peaks, right? So for that we need to import the peaks, right? So here we have generated a peak list. That peak list should be called here in this window, right? For that you just go to operations, 
just press load reload button so here you will be having all the peaks right so now we are going to use all the peaks because i don't have any peak error so that i am going to use all the peaks and i am going to refine all the peaks also right so uh, uh, i mean uh, index all the peaks right so here at the initial stage you just see hkl is not having any value all the hkls are having zero values alone right but after that particular indexing you just see automatically here in the X, hkl some values will be there right so we will see it later so i am going to the next step unit cell list right so now the compound name i don't know anything about the compound name only thing is the file name is 10 dot raw right so i don't know what is that particular compound which is there in the 10 dot raw something like that right so simply i'm going to press all the possible you know uh, you know uh, what is that as uh, various lattices which can be there in my compound right for example i am preparing a compound means i may know sometimes right i may know what is the final product of that particular chemical reaction right so based on that information you can come from for example uh, uh, we know one, uh, one, one example uh, that is zinc oxide right so i am selecting zinc chloride as a precursor and uh, by any of the method you know salt gel method i am preparing a final nanometer that final nanometer can be either zinc oxide is uh, the chemical formula is zn o otherwise zn o2 like that right so two possibilities can be there right so from the if you take the zinc chloride as a precursor only these two uh, uh, products are possible right so zinc oxide zn o means the crystal structure is hexagonal or sometimes orthorhombic also will be coming right so i am going to select the orthorhombic also orthorhombic b and orthorhombic c and orthorhombic p right so simply uh, i know that uh, orthorhombic or hexagonal right if it is either an o2 that time it will be a cubic one right so that time you have to select the cubic also right so like that you can have uh, the pre uh, you know prior knowledge on your uh, uh, you know chemical compound and based on that you can have a knowledge on your on its crystal structure also right so if you don't know anything about uh, material right so somebody is giving you this data and they don't they, they didn't tell you the you know compounds uh, name or something like that or precursors name or something like that at that time you have to select all the possible abravis uh, lattices right so if you uh, select for this particular quick demo i'm going to select only the primitive orthorhombic and also the hexagonal structure itself right hexagonal trigonal so primitive tetragonal and uh, primitive orthorhombic right so i'm going to select these two alone and i'm going to what is that do the cell refine i mean uh, cell indexing so here you have to come to cell index and refine you have to press index cell right it will be taking uh, so much of time based on the candidates what you have selected here various lattice candidates what you have selected here okay so if you have selected all those things it will be taking uh, half an hour or one, one hour like that right i have selected only two here so maybe uh, within one minute or two minute it will be completed okay now you just see here in the bash window you can see you can see the live information okay now it is doing the cell search for orthorhombic it has con con you know uh, completed for trigonal and hexagonal now it is started for orthorhombic structure you just see remaining time is one minute 10 seconds Oh my god, it's taking three more minutes. Oh, it is going to be it is going to be completed now.
when it is going to be completed. Yes. Now you just see, I have all the candidates here, right? All the candidates here. And uh, here you have to select a, a, a you know, candidate out of this particular indexing result. You should have a greater, you know, what is that? A greater M20 values and lesser X20 values, right? So here X20 means excluded peaks. And here it is a you know figure of merit, right? That is M20 is a figure of merit, right? So maybe uh, here this is 301, but uh, here you just see X20 is there, and I can go for the next one, but it is having maybe uh, what is that? Your uh, M20 value is somewhat less, right? So maybe for this example, since I know the compound name, uh, I have not really related. Okay, since I know the compound name, I am going to select this one maybe uh, p6 triple m right so by selecting this you need to go to cell index and refine and you have to press copy cell right so before uh, doing this you just see here here in the unit cell parameters i don't have any, i don't have any parameters right so simply if i press copy cell the data from here the data from here this particular candidate is going to be copied here right now the Braves lattice is P6 MMM and space group what I this what this has automatically selected is P6 MM M itself, right? So here this is the point group and this is the space group, right? So now you have to press refine and you have to do your refinement, right? So but if if you see the refine uh, I mean uh, I, I have pressed refine, but you just see here. Here the refine, is, refine cell is not highlighted, right? Means the space group what we have selected here is not a uh, good one. Okay, so I'm going to select the next one. So now the refine cell is available, right? So you have to press this. You just see the zero offset is very, 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 very high, right? Zero offset is very, very high. So I have to change it to uh, some other, uh, you know, unit cell parameter. For example, um, Maybe I'll select P63MC like that. The same candidate I'm going to select 207 P63. I'm going to copy it again once again. Copy cell and I'm going to select P63MC. Right? So now I'm going to refine this again. Refine cell. Now you just see the zero offset is 0 0.019, right? 0 0.01 okay so zero offset is very 0 0.01 but if i select this one you just see it is having some uh, unwanted peaks also in the peak peak i know plot window right but if i'm selecting that p6 uh, mmm and the space group p63 mc the zero offset is also very 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 less and you just see all the peaks are uh, you know uh, matching to each other right one to one uh, matching is there in your plot window right so maybe uh, my uh, you, uh, my x-ray of uh, i mean uh, uh, unit cell parameter of my compound is 3.25013 and uh, b is also on the 3.25013 and c is 5.20703 and uh, you know alpha beta gamma is 1990120 right 1990120 and volume is 47.63 right right so uh, alpha beta gamma means 90 90 120 means the structure can be uh, your crystal system can be uh, your uh, hexagonal right so i'm going to save this project in this stage i'm saving it now i'm going to see the index peak list right now you just see now all the peaks are automatically indexed now I have now I'm having the what is that you are uh, HKL values right HKL values here right the first peak is having a uh, first peak uh, the HKL value of the first peak is means this peak is is you just see that is 110 peak and this is 002 peak and this is 101 peak right earlier I mean before this particular unit cell uh, you know indexing if you uh, if you have uh, see this uh, peaks they don't show you this kind of uh, HKL, okay? This is 102 and this is 110 like that. It is showing the HKL values for all the peaks, right? So now you can export this particular, you know, uh, peak list also so that uh, from the peak list you can uh, do all the 
you know uh, your uh, uh, size, size and strain, strain calculations right so for that you have to press the export export all peak list right so i am going to save it as 10.10-1 dot txt as a text file i am saving it okay so i have saved it now i am going to use this particular abc alpha beta gamma values and to know about the phase present in my compound right so for that what i am going to do is i am going to open the google uh, i mean any browser and here i am going to uh, open a database called am esd database so here i am going to open the first link so this is what the am csd database right so here i am going to uh, do a cell parameters and symmetry search by pressing cell symmetry and parameters and here i am going to key in the uh, unit cell parameter value from here okay the unit cell parameter values a is 3.25 right but i am going to give it as a range here 3.25 means 3.242 3.26 once again b is also 3.242 3.26 and c value is 5.20 right so 5.192 5.21 right alpha beta gamma is not a variable one so 90 90 90 right and crystal system is hexagonal and your uh, space group is p63 mc right that's what here p63 mc i'm going to type it here p63 mc right so p63 mc right i have selected now you just simply press submit query and you just simply press search okay now i have six matching records for this particular uh, search match analysis from the first itself the abc alpha beta gamma value somewhat matching with my uh, data that is once again space group is p63nc that is having two atoms one is zinc zinc another one is oxygen right so maybe my compound is zinc oxide the next one is also zinc oxide the next one is also zinc oxide and next one is also zinc oxide and next one is also zinc oxide right all the six are having the only compound that is your zinc oxide right so now i have the phase information my compound might be zinc oxide which is having the exact you know uh, unit cell parameters of 3.25013 or 5.20703 of C and the volume of 47.634, right? So this is my exact parameter for my material. And uh, I mean uh, your space group is P63NC and uh, my compound might be zinc oxide, right? From here. And one more thing what you have to do is you have to do one more analysis that is your uh, you know um crystalline like size and strain measurement right for that you have to open that particular 10 10 hyphen 1 dot txt that is a peak list file okay so here you just see we have a position peak position that is 31 the two theta values and here we are having the fwhm values right that is your fwhm means beta value right so here we are having a beta value and here we are having a 2 theta value right so 2 theta value should be converted into theta and it should be converted into radians and the fwhm values also should be converted into radians right so you have to you can call you can call this particular uh, peak list file in uh, excel and in the excel you can simply type the formula for uh, you know Scherer formula and also your uh, stokes wilson formula okay maybe i'll show you that too maybe i'll opening the excel please wait i'm opening the excel app so here i'm going to the data i'm going to what is that uh, call the data okay maybe i'm opening the text file
So here, like this, you can uh, import the text file. Okay. Here, maybe I wrongly imported that. Please wait again. File, open. And here, I have ten dot one right text and based on not the space only based on the semicolon and command tab I'm going to import it right now you just see I have imported oh my god once again tab only I have to use Open. Yes, now you just see, I'm, I'm pressing edge delimiters and I have corrected, correctly imported the data, okay. The first one is, eight columns, so we don't need all these things, right, only thing is we need the position and the FWHM, right, so here, Convert into radians. Of position. So I'm going to convert all the position into radians. Sorry, first I have to. Be four divided by two. Right. So I have to. Find out the theta and then radians of d4 radians of this column okay so then i have to find out the radians of beta also now here i can type that particular uh, you know your uh, Scherer formula that is your 0.9 into lambda is 1.54056, right? That is the k alpha 1 into 10 to the power minus 9, minus 9, sorry, 10 to the power minus 10, 10 Armstrong, divided by beta cos theta, right? So here, this is the beta into beta cos of this theta. Right here one bracket and here one bracket should be there, right? So if you simply press enter, sorry. cos of e4 okay now this is what the crystallite size right so crystallite size is 1.04 uh, maybe i can adjust the points right Sorry, I have done some mistake. 
Right? This is what that, uh, you know, uh, size of that particular uh, crystallite size, right? So here the average is 1.01, right? So here I'm going to add the average. Average of G3 is to Right. So, the average crystallite size is 101 nanometer, right? 1.0122 into 10 to the minus 7. If you convert it into nanometer, it is 101 nanometer, right? So, roughly uh, 100 nanometer, right? So, like this, you can uh, uh, determine the value of crystallite size. For the strain, you can have that particular uh, beta, of, uh, beta cot theta, right? Beta cot theta or beta divided by tan theta. That's what the equation, right? So, beta is this one. No, this is what the beta divided by cot of theta. Right? Like this. You can have the strain for all the thing and here you can take the average. Average of H4 is to H4 to H14, right? So this is the average value of the micro strain, right? So 0.9 into 10 to the minus 3 is the micro strain value, right? So like that you can find out the uh, crystallite size and strain also, right? So here in this semi-quantitative phase analysis, what are the things we have done? We have, uh, you know, uh, we extracted the value of unit cell parameter that is uh, A, B and C and volume, A, B, C values and uh, the alpha, beta, gamma and volume, cell unit cell volume. And then we have the peak list, which is which is the indexed peak list, right? So here for all the peaks we have the HKL values, and then from this particular peak list we have this particular crystallite size and strain value, right? So with this uh, we'll be uh, what is that? Uh, concluding this video. Thank you.